Right. And then let me share the screen. All right. Yeah. Before that, let me also uh, mute my video. Or maybe I'll do it once I go there. Yeah. Uh, share the screen. And then go to the presentation. Okay. Um, let me keep it here, but then there is a problem. Okay. Uh, let me put it in the full screen mode first, and then hopefully it should fit here more or less. Okay. Um, so this clarification part is what we would go through now. And uh, yeah, I'll mute this. Uh, yeah, let me mute this camera as well so that no distraction. Okay, right. So uh, from the last class, you had all these uh, questions. Uh, what was the purpose of lens and then why it is called circle of confusion? and how to interpret the F number, why is it mentioned as F by some number, okay? And uh, relation between depth of field and aperture size, and uh, why does jolly zoom, uh, dolly zoom, okay, this word already uh, is like a tongue twister for me, okay, dolly zoom bring distortion, okay, these were the questions. And then these are the two answers, you, with the lens, you are able to gather more light, and also you have control on where to focus, those are the two points, okay? Uh, this I am going now very quickly, not again a 25 minutes video, okay, because we already had a detailed thing. So, uh, if things are, uh, so, yeah, for more details, you could go there. But for those of you who have already gone through it, if you have any um, further questions here, please feel free to raise them here, okay, so that we could try to get the clarification. Right. So, this is, uh, by the way, uh, what is the relationship here? Can you quickly tell me? Um, uh, hope I could draw here. Okay, so since, uh, yeah, just one minute. So this pen, okay. So let me give it as a, just a 2D picture, okay. Uh, oops, the pen is not at on. Okay, hopefully now it's on, right, okay. So let me give you it this way. Uh, I have, this is where the uh, center of project, or, or the spin hole is there, okay. This is, for example, the pin hole is there. And then there is an object here of height D. And beyond that, assume that I have this uh, screen where I am getting it or a sensor, whatever you call it, this D naught. Okay, this is why, where I have the screen. Then can you tell me what's the height that I would get there? This is, do you need for that any other information? Well, assume, okay, this height, let's call it as Z H here. Okay, easy to. This let's call this as D. Now, what's the what's the relation? So you will get, for example, this is your object, right? Now you will get the object here, reflect uh, because this going through this part, right? And then anyway, this and then of course, this would make a point here, assuming it a single hole. Now, um, yeah, a point hole. So you have here variables: the height of the object, distance from the pinhole to the object and distance from the pinhole to the point where you are capturing the image. And let's call the output H0 here. Can you give me the relation of H0 in terms of these three variables? Hello? Uh, yeah. Tell me the relation of this. We have not explicitly derived it, but this is very straightforward here. So give it a try. Well, how do you say what will be? Uh, sorry? H into D naught by D. Right. H D naught by D. Correct. So all you need to do here is just take the similar triangles. So here there is a height H there. H by H naught should be equal to, this is one triangle and this is another similar triangle. That should be equal to D by D naught. So that gives you, you want H naught is equal to H into D naught by D. Right? That's all. Uh, so this is how you get the scaling here. So you could see here as the distance of the object keeps on increasing, right? This 
H naught would come down. That's why far object would give you a very um, small scale uh, image here, right? Yeah, that's the simple model of your pinhole camera. Um, then what you do is you uh, the light passing through it would be very small. So uh, we are considering a case where you have a, beyond a particular threshold. This is in, instead of having a single hole, now you had a, a like a slit here, okay, rather than a single point. So you could see here this point now would contribute the rays. It's not the single ray that goes through. It contributes to all these points here. So similarly of the object to take a some other point here. So that also would now would not just go here, but this would have a contribution here as well as here. Okay, uh, or around that. So this basically would give you kind of a Gaussian smoothing, you do, uh, something similar effect there. So that's why you get a blurry image here when you have a large aperture. So what's the next uh, thing? Uh, so uh, if we keep on, in, in order to avoid this, if you keep on reducing this, then again, uh, uh, this uh, optical diffraction and other things would come. But anyway, you usually would like to have a, a large value of uh, uh, the light coming, more light coming through it. So the solution for it is here you are using a, uh, a lens here that converges the things. So that now even if you have a point here, that would eventually con could converge to a different, uh, yeah, a different, a different point here. Okay, so the convergence, so because of this uh, convergence, you have a focus here. And similarly, uh, you, are, you could now manage to have a larger hole here, okay, aperture there. So that would give you also much more light. Okay, this is a, yeah, of course, you could also try uh, making it uh, at your home, okay. Uh, then again, if you there will be if you just go through, you could also see you, you need you could actually uh, make that light again fall on some something that directs you that uh, instead of having it vertically, uh, uh, so like another uh, reflector could make them bring it horizontally so that you could simply see it there. Okay, on a just like you uh, uh, on a horizontal one which is just lying down there. You could play a lot. Uh, with slight variations, but this is how the uh, pinhole camera and the lens part is there. Okay, these were again uh, repetition of slides that you have seen there. So this is where you have a good image. Okay, you had good focus and everything, but this is where you increase it further. Those were the cases here. Okay, this the, the ones before having large aperture size, giving you blurry uh, images, but then you reduce, then also you would get a blurry uh, images there. Okay. Then you have a control. So if you have a, uh, a lens of different uh, sizes or, or different, sorry, different focal lens that would allow you on these parallel lights, where is it going to focus here is given by this F naught, right? So assume that you have a control or changing the focal length of your lens. Um, so that would help you. Um, so yeah. Uh, you to have a control over which is the 3D object that you would like to uh, are in other words. Uh, so this distance is essentially uh, from this, uh, yeah, uh, would tell you which is there, uh, uh, which range of depths is what we would like to see more focused in the object. Sir, the focal length is uh, fixed by the lens only, right? Right, correct. See, uh, in your, that's why in your cameras, all these SLR cameras, you would have control over the fo focal length actually. That's what they would do. How do we do that? Like the, do we vary the, like since does any, does the aperture have anything to do with that? No, right? No, no. Actually, that, that, it's not the aperture. If you notice, these guys, they will be carrying lenses with them. For uh, taking a objects uh, which are long distance, they will be adding lenses. Even you could see some crazy things people, uh, not crazy things, some fancy things people would be doing with uh, even simple cameras also, where uh, simple uh, mobile phones also, they they found a way to add lenses there. Did you not see mm. such? Ah, yes, yes, yes. So exactly, eventually the effective focal length, you see, you might not use a, just a single lens, but a combination of lenses giving an effective focal length for a different range values. Okay, sir. Yeah, mm, that's as far as uh, the purpose of lens and uh, uh, pinhole camera versus the lens. Okay, 
the second one was circle of confusion uh, see you get uh, uh, when you have a lens here you could see uh, object is at this point for example an object which is farther than this or an object which is closer than this assume that uh, uh, now what would happen uh, assume that this is the focal length of your uh, or this, this, is for, this is for which you could get a focus here now if you have an object for example after this what would happen this would eventually this would continue going like this this would continue going like this in this case what would happen this is what it would these again we are drawing it in 2d but you imagine that as a 3d as a beam whole beam coming um, within a cone kind of stuff okay you just rotate these two uh, along the y axis so that you would see how it looks like so similarly here this beam of cone would uh, continue here okay where this convergence point is here this is the case where the convergence point is exactly falling on that okay in 3d now if you are going to take a uh, slice here okay any slice here uh, either before or after so essentially on the uh, on the whole uh, a cone shaped beam you are taking a snapshot of it so that if you look at here you would in fact will have a circular thing any at any point so that's why they would call it as a circle of confusion there are other names also but uh, this is a commonly used circle of confusion you call it confusion because you have a blurred uh, stuff there is that clear why we call it circle of confusion okay so the next one was uh, f number okay uh, this f number is the ratio of uh, focal length this is the so what will uh, yeah. what yes. will determine the radius of the circle of confusion yes you tell me that so that essentially see which converges here the distance is more for example you you go farther and farther here right so the uh, if it is designed to keep this objects which are at this distance in 3d in focus if you are going too far right you are essentially taking this snapshots at different points here either here or if it is too close then you are taking somewhere here right so uh, as long as this object is within the limits then the circle of confusion will be less okay but the moment it goes far away from here then the circle of confusion would increase so that's what would so the in other words the focal the relationship between the focal length of your lens and and the point where the object is the object height these are the two things which would uh, determine what is the um, uh, what is the extent to which you have the circle of confusion see this is essentially the the question in a way to put it differently is asking where to take a snapshot of this cone of beam that's all Mm, is that clear? Yes, sir. Good. So then the F number uh, through which we are characterizing uh, the uh, so there are two things. You have a length, sorry, you have a lens to which you have this is characterized. You have this uh, what is this called as focal focal length, right? This is the focal length uh, which tells you where it gets uh, focused. Okay. So that if it is coming from that point, yeah. Uh, so that's related to the focal length f. And another is in your camera, you have this control over how much should be the aperture, right? Just like the pupil in our case. So these two things are there. And now you could see here. Um, uh, so that I think that, that image also I should be having, right? Take a look here. Um, so if you have a you you are using only small aperture thing now you look at see the, this is again uh, boils down to the question that uh, uh, that has been you, you, you are asking just now so yeah somewhat similar to that is that suppose you have a small cone of beam here right the angle so small cone of beam means of course this angle you have will be same right uh, this angle is that angle same there uh, so yeah at this point if you see the angle would be the same no will it be same no because the other one is you are considering large aperture in one case so that is bringing something like this correct 
So one is a small aperture versus large aperture. Now you consider that uh, the area, uh, effectively that you have it for a given uh, uh, point here in the Z axis would tell you whether it is uh, focused or not, how much blur you are getting there. That area essentially is uh, giving you a characterization of uh, uh, how much depth, uh, like how many points there are contributing to that particular point in, in, in one way. So now you could see here, suppose this versus this, if you take snapshots here, then for a small aperture, the you could have a reasonably clear uh, resolution uh, for this height variations here, okay? To this much, you could range of uh, heights that you could characterize here. Whereas, yeah, this, this is here, for example, and this is a longer one here. So the this gray color is telling you where it is. So this should tell us that uh, uh, if you have, so that's what we refer to as depth of field here, okay? And again, if you look at here, um, on uh, this flowers are there, and beyond that, at a different, at a much higher depth, there are objects here, okay? So if the moment uh, you have, you could see here, in this case, for example, those which pass through here and uh, form the object here, all this area, whichever the points are there, could all pass through and uh, contribute to the uh, fairly there to the image, whereas the acceptable range would be here, a smaller range would be there here, okay? So the uh, same explanation we have given there. And now F number, well, we have seen it is focal length divided by the diameter of your, uh, mm, uh, your aperture, okay? The aperture is uh, which you are allowing to go through. That's why we are calling it as, I think, active aperture or, uh, or some other word we are using there, okay? So this diameter, uh, so high aperture, this is in the denominator. So here, this diameter is a large diameter, 5.6, okay? This 32 is a small diameter. So uh, you could use it, for example, another image here that tells you, uh, suppose you are having, you would like to have a photograph of yourself, okay? That case, what would you prefer? It's not the how good the background is, is not is of what of your interest, but rather to get a very crisp uh, portrait of yourself in that image. So then what you would do is, you would have the depth of focus very limited, okay? Assume that you are standing somewhere there. That is of your interest and you don't want to let the attention slip to the background, assume that, okay? So then okay, that case, what you would have here, you would have a large aperture or a small aperture you would have a large aperture there. That means your uh, F number is small there, okay? It's not, that is not the case. You, uh, you are looking at a very beautiful mountains, okay? You want to create a uh, very nice image of it, uh, having as much uh, depth or as much uh, uh, like landscape as, as possible. So that's the case where you would perhaps go for a, um, small aperture or f number being large so that's so right. this uh, the value f uh, slash whatever the value is right that is the ratio of the focal length and the aperture size right or is right. it just the aperture size uh, no it is the ratio of the for okay. the f number they were representing it as f by this but <coughs> yeah, suppose if you substitute the f value here okay then what you get is essentially the diameter of your active aperture okay so Hmm. Uh, so that's what you would uh, get there. So probably, I don't know, I haven't paid attention to these numbers, but what could have happened is probably once they substituted F, they are getting this value, I guess, for that given uh, camera. You could just cross check that by just looking at these two values, maybe one by 250 and one by 640. Okay, if some of you could uh, do try, try it out. Here you have, assume that from here you figure out F, what is the F value, which is equivalent to F equal to 3.5 by 640, okay? Then uh, uh, that's your F value. So just to try this out, 3.5 by 640, okay? Uh, uh, into 5.6. Is that giving you one by 250? No. Sir, is, uh, is F the focal length or something yeah, else? This is the focal length. I was assuming they, they have this, they are using the same camera. 
I sir, uh, yeah. 640 is not the focal length. It is the exposure length. Okay, I don't think we should okay, right. Oh, 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 okay, got it, got it. So, 1 by 640 is, uh, so essentially as you are moving here, what is done here? You are uh, increasing or reducing the focal length. You are reducing the, sorry, you are reducing the diameter, right? When you are reducing the diameter, you should uh, increase the exposure time. Correct? So, probably this is the exposure. So, 1 by 15 means they are increasing the exposure time. Is that correct? Is that what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Uh, how did you figure it out? Yes, uh, we use a photograph, sir. Canvas. Oh, okay, good, good, good. I think uh, this is a good excuse to uh, go through the photography classes that probably would give you, uh, give us much better uh, understanding of those things. <laughs> so it's like uh, then uh, 1 by 15th of a second, this is given as an exposure time, is it that? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So is there any, as such a relationship established between how to, for a given diameter, how would you figure out uh, what should be the exposure time? Sir, um, as we uh, reduce the diameter in the from the first to the fourth image, so the light entering would reduce. So okay. you would have to uh, increase the exposure time. Yeah, that is but, right. Uh, no hard and fast rule that these are the numbers. Depending okay. on the scenario, we choose the right. Okay, okay. So perhaps that also depends on what is the range of depth that you are going to... Uh, capture so, so probably it will have an impact on that also i don't know okay yes. that's good uh, so we have a photography club in Th iit tirupati yes sir we do oh okay okay uh, so are these things discussed to to an extent there what is the cef number and all these things uh, i'm not sure sir. okay okay good <laughs> okay anyways that's fine right so that's about this F number and other things. By the way, this is also an interesting thing. Um, you look at, uh, so for example, you take one number here. Uh, from here, what it is trying to do is light gathering area, for example, with these numbers in each case is half of the previous one. So you have something like your pi r square, or if you take the diameter itself, that's pi d square by four, okay? Uh, that's something related to the aperture thing. So if that has to become uh, half of it, what should be the case? You, you look at it and this turns out because there is a d square here. So d by root 2 whole square would make it uh, half there, right? So anyway, if you want to increase by 2, then it, it that's essentially you need to multiply the diameter by d root 2, correct? Then you get uh, in terms of area that becomes uh, here, uh, for example, uh, d naught you consider here. So in this case, D naught is the diameter for a given focal length, you consider it. So if you have D naught root two times D naught here, then what would happen here in terms of the area pi r square, right? So pi two D naught square. So this will become two times pi D naught square here. So essentially uh, this has the uh, ratio of the diameter to the focal length. So focal length to the diameter. So the moment you consider the focal length constant, you have more, uh, area, light gathering area, that's essentially, you multiply it with root two, that will give you two, again root two, 2.8, okay. Root two multiplication is difficult to see, uh, root two equal to 1.414, till there it is fine. So you look at the two steps, that's easy to uh, follow up things. So from here to here, root two into, uh, root two into two, two, so basically two times 1.4, okay, 2.8, then two times this 5.6. Okay, similarly here, this is much easier, two times two, four, then four times two, eight. Okay, or in, in, in between steps, you have root two. Hope this is clear why uh, initially I was wondering why they have considered all this 2.8 and 5.6. Then I realized from this uh, uh, explanation in this Wikipedia that uh, what essentially they are looking at is, uh, amount of light gathered is essentially equal to the area that you are uh, providing it to let it come inside, okay. So that essentially, these are the numbers uh, where you had a half of that area. Because of that, they are giving you the uh, corresponding uh, uh, diameters. Is this clear? Okay, so I hope it is clear then. Uh, this is done, okay. Mm.
this is also done okay yeah most of the content actually that photographic uh, uh, like guys who are giving an explanation that is where i am finding out more in due to explanations than the conventional textbook so it's not those who have interest towards photography not a bad idea to do some uh, uh, some online uh, course as well this is this looks interesting oh, if you have a camera also with you where you can play with lens aperture that would be even more interesting but don't buy it asking uh, don't ask your parents to buy it because this is a part of the course and I'll don't tell them <laughs> okay so this the last part we were discussing is uh, you know, how this uh, uh, why uh, in the face also we see it so this essentially is a uh, perspective distortions we are uh, getting either while we are changing the focal length okay so for the large distances essentially we have seen that you use a high focal length that means your zoom uh, okay then your uh, angle of view would be small there okay so either by playing with so what you are trying to see is with respect to the background the proportion of things okay with respect to the background is roughly with respect to the rest of the image is what you want to keep constant so you could either so essentially if you consider a case where you are moving your camera so uh, accordingly you need to either zoom in or zoom out for a given lens so rather than myself giving any explanation i found uh, the other video there very uh, yeah this part was explained very nicely here um, see again uh, the pinhole camera thing what we discussed there and how it scales up you just go through it and uh, that that would uh, keep that in mind on how the objects scale down okay uh, or like as you are moving away from the object or coming closer to the object so that should uh, that will uh, along with that you please go through it some two minutes uh, thing this explained nicely so yeah uh, with that i am sure this would be clear to you okay so with that we are done with uh, uh, uh these cameras and images the next part we would uh, go through is uh, um, uh, is this uh, perspective projection is what we would go through it maybe yeah one class or one and a half class okay depending on how long it comes right so uh, well i have not yet managed to record that video because i was I had to do some other uh, things for the other course i could not manage it uh, I will post it. I will try to. So, if I post the video, one one more lecture would be good enough. Okay, we could cover that. Anyway, we have uh, at least we finished only half an hour. So the rest half an hour, I, I'll now go through it. Okay, so that next time uh, lecture it won't take much. So if you are fine with it, what other thing that I could do here is uh, uh, maybe day after tomorrow. Today is then Thursday. So maybe even tomorrow or day after tomorrow, if we could have a class of, let's say, just there is some chat here. Uh, okay, something I think sent by mistake. Okay, uh, so uh, if you, we could actually uh, have a class and finish it up. Okay, before that, let me also show you where we stand right now uh, in terms of our syllabus. Okay. So let me again share this, uh, share screen, right, and let me go here, yeah, yeah. so hope you are all able to see here, okay, uh, yeah, this, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me take annotate, okay, this should work hopefully. Uh, not the only spotlight is there, or I could draw also. I think okay, let's uh, okay, eraser stamp. Is this a pen here? This draw I should take, or sp okay, spotlight is good enough. Okay, so introduction anyway done, human vision done, spatial filtering we have we are done with this, edge detection we are done, of transforms we did it, okay, frequency filtering we skipped it, okay. Uh, I plan to, by the way, offer uh, uh, medical imaging course in the uh, coming semester. Uh, so that time I would uh, discuss about the 2D uh, frequency filtering and also anyway, the current third years, if uh, some of you are interested, uh, uh, you could consider uh, attending that. Anyway, that's a detail. 
right so this is what we have not gone through it but anyway harris corner detector we have gone through that sift we have done that and uh, then anyway uh, the scale invariant harris also we did it then um, key point matching uh, well the, this we have gone through more detail than what we initially thought we had image transforms also here then optical flow we are done with it and uh, image pyramids this time i have not gone through it in very detail but nevertheless whatever is required for uh, lucas and canada that we have already uh, covered so i am fine with it we will just uh, and again you could go through it uh, for further details uh, through other videos but that's good enough for our course and then cameras and images is done okay uh, we covered quite some content right so then uh, yeah if you agree uh, to have a class either tomorrow or day after tomorrow maybe again it won't be a very long duration class some 32 or maybe some 45 minutes should be good enough uh, meanwhile i'll try to upload a video which you could go through it and then uh, further discuss and wrap it up okay with that we will be done with the uh, prospective modeling then we will go to stereo okay and uh, you know, stereo assume we go through it for a week okay and then for a couple, week or two we go to shape from structured light and there we will stop this graph cuts for image segmentation i will skip for the time being again i will for those of you who are in third years if you are interested you may either attend the medical amazing I, I plan to cover that in medical amazing or else at some point i'll try to post the videos on that graph cut based image segmentation you could go through it or already you could find quite some videos on that also or quite some material if not even videos so that's the idea of uh, what we do okay so we plan to sometime in the middle of next month uh, one week uh, uh, here like before or after that we will be wrapping up and uh, yeah we will wrap up here shape from structured light is where we wrap up okay yeah any questions or comments about this or any yeah any doubts about this the syllabus we are going to cover Is it fine? Or since you anyway have um, some of you be coming till June only, so do you want me to cover uh, graph cuts also? I hope your uh, muteness is equivalent to acceptance. Okay, that case I could cover it. Yes, Harish. Okay. Anyway, after uh, quiz one, till quiz one, where did we, where were we there? I think till Harris it is there, right? Uh, till quiz one, uh, we covered Harris. So then uh, after that, there is SIFT uh, or ANSAC, then uh, image registrations and optical flow, cameras and images, perspective modeling, shape from stereo and shape from structure. I think that's good enough. I think otherwise it would be too, um, uh, too much of a uh, content for you. So I will stop with that shape from structured light is where I will uh, stop with. Okay, uh, with that, shall I uh, go through some introduction to perspective modeling so that that need not be repeated? Okay. Uh, so yeah, let me do that. Let me stop the video. So you all know by this time what's a, what is perspective uh, perspective modeling or uh, perspective vision. What what does that? What do you think is the meaning of that? Oops. How to come out of this? Let me... Minute. Okay. okay. I want to come out of this. Yeah. Let me stop sharing for a moment. Okay. Then, yeah. Hopefully, now it should be fine. Uh, let me now share the screen. Share it. Okay. And then. And then uh, I had it somewhere around, yeah, perspective modeling. Okay, so let's have some start some uh, brief introduction to this, and then uh, uh, so introductory part I will finish in this lecture, 
and then the remaining there is something some content i leave it for the next class okay uh, well uh, yeah, so uh, let's start with something we already know and we have been doing for quite some time that's euclidean um, the euclidean geometry versus perspective geometry so what would happen in case of uh, euclidean geometry is objects suppose you had an object okay that in the euclidean space you you applied a rigid transformation on it okay rigid transformation you all know it we already saw it in mesh transforms there you would see that the lens the angles and the parallel lines would parallelism if you call it okay uh, parallel lines remaining as parallel all those properties would uh, still remain intact in in case of a euclidean geometry okay roughly perspective um, uh, projection you could also call it as a projective geometry as well it's like from uh, perspective is uh, you, we say loosely that word we also use this is your perspective and my perspective that essentially means that we a different viewpoint essentially right that's not the whole holistic picture of it or wholesome picture of it but rather than a particular viewpoint of it so that's exactly what it means you have a 3d world uh, the moment you are taking an image you are getting a 2d snapshot of it from different viewpoints essentially from where you are capturing that would image would change so how do they appear from that particular viewpoint is what this projective geometry would give us okay um, so in this whole process uh, unlike the rigid transformations in the euclidean geometry uh, what would could happen here is the lens could get modified of your object could appear differently the angles at which they appear could change which are parallel might not be any more appear as parallel they could get distorted okay and uh, so why why do we study this we study it because this gives us a mathematical model suppose i have a uh, even a simple 3d uh, model and if i tell you that you assume that you are creating a uh, yeah this is a very trivial example but still serves the purpose assuming that you are uh, create you, you create you are creating a uh, like a, a video game okay or a computer game um, where uh, essentially you are going through some fort or uh, through some buildings on the roads and different things so basically there you have to you might you could create a 3d model but the mobile all the way you see it is in the 2d world and the screen is what you are looking at suppose you have a mathematical model and if i tell you th then what i could do is i could i have a 3d world i'll tell you what's the viewpoint then you will be able to tell me how it looks like right so that's one thing and of course this is a very trivial example but rather assume the case now a more practical uh, example could be uh, i would like to construct 3d from 2d okay single 2d won't give me but assume that i'm doing uh, um, uh, multiple snapshots from different viewpoints uh, essentially uh, with the two eyes uh, the uh, like uh, uh, decoding what's the um, actual or uh, resolving what's the 3d world is is essentially we are with two eyes from two viewpoints okay you have two perspective projections combined together is giving you the 3d world okay that's something you could uh, think of it as the motivation for why we should study the perspective projection okay um, so actual actual uh, world versus how they appear if you look at it you consider a case of the railway tracks okay uh, you know that they are parallel and then um, below those railway tracks you have i think that those are referred as ties i guess okay they are perpendicular to your tracks and then those ties are uh, you, so the ones which are there below your uh, railway tracks okay and then uh, they are evenly placed usually okay supporting your railway tracks but this is how if you take a photograph of it okay from uh, i think uh, in a direction uh, perpendicular to those parallel tracks if i keep it okay your uh, your uh, uh, yeah your optical axis is in parallel okay your center of projection is in parallel with these parallel lines then this is how they look like right so what would happen uh, so uh, in reality parallel lines would never meet but this is what could happen okay something and then uh, tracks 
don't meet but they are meeting not only meeting they converge to a, uh, a single point there and uh, uh, these the distances here if you look at it okay the distances between the ties would keep on reducing one thing and then the idea in reality these two are perpendicular but you could never see them as yeah you with this at least in this viewpoint you won't see them as perpendicular right that's one effect of it okay another example of perspective projection is you take a picture of your room okay room is essentially you could consider as if you are inside a 3d cube right and then you try to capture uh, the uh, the image of a corner of your room you know that uh, how much is the uh, contributions of angles at the corners of a room while you are sitting in your uh, room uh, any corner you take it you sum up all the angles so how much do you get there so essentially how many corners can you see there uh, sorry how many i uh, what should i call at the corner how many edges do you see it again double edges parallel ignore the parallel ones you essentially have three edges meeting there right uh, so whole thing would be equivalent to all of them are perpendicular so you have 270 degrees but you take a picture of it now this would be 360 degrees is what you look like uh, this corner and of course uh, whether it is evenly spaced or all these angles are equal or not would depend on the angle at which you are uh, from the viewpoint where you are taking uh, the from which you are taking the picture they might appear differently okay this might appear this and this as well it, it could it depends okay or you might not yeah so that's how you could say the angles would re get retained so this is a perspective projection essentially you are getting a 2d so the moment you are getting uh, a a projection of a 3d world onto a 2d surface that's what you refer to as a perspective projection because that would appear from different viewpoints or different perspectives differently so that's essentially is equal to referred to as perspective projection okay yeah one more example here where uh, assume that there are three mountains okay uh, you could view them from different uh, points assume that this is where you are standing okay and you are viewing these uh, okay the good thing is uh, we could make uh, uh, we could imagine or visualize from 2d the 3d to an extent so assume that at each point these are uh, these mountains are there so how do they look like from suppose if you are looking by standing here it looks like as if this b the mountain b is in between a and c okay and now assume that instead of uh, there is another guy uh, so the guy standing here would say that b is in the middle of a and c okay uh, so in practice if you see from the top okay the, uh, then b is not at all there in between a and c there is nothing in between a and c nothing in between b and c and nothing in between a and b okay that's another perspective okay and then you assume that you are standing here at this position okay then what would happen it appears as if so if you draw it now what would happen uh, you have here a then you would be having here b and c so from while right here looking from here this is the a is there okay to your left hand side you have c and to your right hand side you have b so this is again you, you know it this uh, in optics you call it as parallax shift as well right this is this uh, phenomena or this principle is uh, earlier well known so this is essentially is perspective projection okay so far clear anyway we haven't done any math of it but hopefully those examples are clear hope what it means by perspective projection is clear to you any questions so far okay uh, so then uh, yeah uh we so this is what we are see what is it that we are trying to now study is you have a 3d in a 3d world you have a point xyz let's come back to again no lenses anymore very ideal world we are going through now which is a without any aberrations and without any errors a pinhole camera model is what you we are going through it 
uh, we will use from now on for the rest of this uh, uh, topic okay so uh, the pinhole camera model so this you have a center of procession here uh, so this is another uh, uh, another important uh, change that we would adapt to from now on okay to the camera model assume that you have you have your uh, uh, so this is your center of projection so in a way this is the hole that you have it for the pinhole camera hole okay the real world object is here so assume that you have the uh, sensor or capturing thing here okay this point would uh, would now get inverted here but now onwards assume that this distance is d okay and suppose if you instead so once you know this okay suppose if i if i what would be the scenario suppose i instead of having this plate here okay this uh, capturing uh, sensor here if i keep here at a d distance what do i get on that screen what is its relation to what what i would have been getting if i had kept a screen here versus putting that screen at a distance d on the other side of your center of projection can you tell me the relationship between those two images that you would get is my question clear image will be erect image will be erect it won't be invert okay and what about the size of the image and the uh, other uh, aspects of the image uh, no yeah any other answers so what would be the size of, so one thing is image won't get inverted is what you are saying right yes sir yeah in addition to that can you tell more about uh, what you get on the screen versus what you would be getting here so will the object size would what will be object size here okay versus the object size here same size sir right same size object because similar triangles are there that's right similar. so to get rid of here is the inversion there is no inversion okay and uh, that's all so in the all the rest of our uh, presentations and in fact this is what you would do in perspective projection camera modeling and all your uh, mathematical analysis and deductions from there on this is one uh, ch change or this is one thing that you would follow consistently you will have scr the screen here okay as if magically it knows where the center of projection is because uh, before this pa light passes through here so mathematically this is an equivalent model except without this inversion so from now on um, this is one change we our screen is not at the back of the center of projection but before the center of projection this is mathematically equivalent to having it there okay all the properties and everything so this is one change that we would be adapting to okay uh, so now next thing um, yeah uh, by the way to have the right handed coordinates g is in this direction okay once you have taken see again uh, you want to take a uh, this is where you are taking snapshots in x y x comma y at different z values you could take okay so that's why g is taken along this axis as if you are moving this in, the, in any of these directions that is giving you an x comma y now the next question is if you know x y z okay and if i tell you uh, what is the value at which i have kept this okay in other words 
that's telling you where my screen was here okay that's as good as telling you uh, what is this d value at the distance here can we tell about anyway z uh, so from 3d world we are projecting it onto a 2d so can we say this x comma y point where will it go here onto the screen x dash y dash okay this is the next question we are trying to answer so this is again is not very difficult to work out okay uh, before working out okay that's eventually what we would like to work out but before that just take a uh, what would happen to distant objects here for example uh, again we are good at imagining 3d from 2d so that helps us to yeah there is no way otherwise to draw something and discuss okay because we are all looking on a 2d surfaces right so assume that this is your object a center of projection in object so this distance to that object here this value is d okay and your screen is also at a distance of d so what would be the length of that object here on the screen same length same length correct now assume that i have an object of length of much higher length here okay assume that this length is again um, 2d is not a bad uh, hope you are able to visualize from this image the 3d how these are placed okay with the help of those lines right uh, so assume that this is of length 2 uh, so this is h naught let's call it okay let's call this as 2 times h naught height okay now this is at a distance of 2d okay uh, from the uh, from the uh, uh, but again here at a different angle it is the 2d distance is there and then how much would be its uh, length here that's get projected here that b what would be this length i'm giving you this this is two times this if i call it as h naught okay this i am telling you it is two times h naught or before that let's take this the same height object h naught okay which is now there at a, at a distance of 2d from here where the whole distance is 2d so that reflection here falling here how much would be the length of that h not by 2 right correct so essentially the object farther it is it appears smaller and thanks to the pinhole camera model that we have worked it out it's very simple the relationship is straight forward and you could figure out how big or how small it uh, appears right now yeah, that we worked it out in 1d here right this is a, although we have solved it but the pinhole camera essentially we are looking at uh, uh, yeah in even a lesser dimension x and y we are not at all considering we are considering only along the x we are considering but a simple similar triangles of two sets of similar triangles would give you a, this relationship so this this is just an action extension to one more dimension okay um, I leave it to you to go through that. This is a you have it here on how you do it. Okay. Um, this again, um, I, I gathered these uh, or compiled these slides from multiple sources. So this x, y, z keep on varying. For example, in this case, x and y is taken in this directions. Okay. And with that, so earlier I was taking this as x and that as y. So this happened to be the z direction. But with this coordinate system, Z is having right-handed coordinate system is fine. Okay. Uh, well, so then um, if you want to derive the relationship of the goal here is to given X comma Y. Okay. And given the focal length, okay, focal length you call it. Otherwise, it is also F here. If not focal length, it's just the distance from the center of projection to your screen essentially. Okay. Don't kind of, um, there is no... Uh, lens here as such but that's where you are projecting things okay now you are keeping that r in other words the distance from here to here essentially okay this is your f if i give you that the question here is how are this x y related to x dash y dash is it to look at it in 1d case that we have already in the beginning of this session we have read out also right in the other uh, clarifications to the last lecture okay so now if you take actually two similar triangles sets of similar triangles will be there okay this is one set right and this is another set okay Th this is one triangle if i call it as o capital a capital b okay 
this small a and small b you use that set of triangles and then there is another set here okay this versus this okay this along x and y you are uh, doing it so let me call here o, a b okay something like o dash okay o dash a b okay let me call this as o double dash o double dash capital a capital b you simply uh, and then you call it as r here r dash here this diagonal okay and this r dash were there earlier thing so with these two sets of triangles if you work it out uh, intuitively this this is i am sure this is already clear to you because one day you did the same thing okay when you didn't have the y it was easy because just one set of triangles are good enough so what would happen here uh, well would, would have been called as x dash y dash and then z okay a z dash the new value this g dash is where essentially your uh, your screen is there okay this x dash should be equivalent to x multiplied with minus d by g has come because this this distance was uh, uh, minus g because the way x and y are considered if i had considered uh, this as y and this has x that's a slightly then that negative sign don't worry about that negative sign because uh, see implicitly this g also has a negative sign so that will take care of those things okay uh, anyways not uh, here so x dash is equivalent to the x multiplied with let me simply call this value as f where i i could include the negative sign also f by z okay and then this y dash will be equal to y times f by z okay if i call the r they are using here d but f by z okay i i could have used minus d there otherwise and then your z dash is where your screen is that's here z dash equal to f are those uh, relationship clear if you want the derivation as i mentioned you take those two sets of similar triangles you just simply work it out okay i will quickly i'll share those slides also um those are yeah you take those two sets of uh, triangles you write the relationship and you will end up this with this relationship okay so uh but bef yeah uh, but anyway this should you, if you simply extend it from 1d to 2d here okay x dash y dash that's already we are done with this so are you clear with this relationship is this intuitive enough to you all i am saying is you want an x dash value here the original where it gets projected here on this would depend on the uh that basically div gets divided by your z value where it is and x times d by z similarly y dash equal to y times d by z is that clear to you are any questions here can i assume that this is clear to you okay since no one is saying i hope this is clear to everyone so that's the relationship which gives you the uh, perspective projection so the next question would be uh, can you represent this transformation in a linear way so what is it that we got since there is some space here uh, white space here let me write it here x dash equal to x times f by z y dash equal to y times f by z what is my z dash z dash equal to z dash equal to anyone there f f correct right now what i would like you to do here is um can you now i want this x dash y dash g dash equivalent to okay it's going i think whenever it is touching my hand something multiplied by x y z so that this matrix would characterize the perspective projection is this possible is this possible
Yes, sir. Hmm? So, what is the matrix there? F by Z one one. Ah, uh, sorry. F by Z. F by Z zero zero zero. F by Z zero zero zero. F by Z. Yeah. Zero. And zero zero. 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 F by Z. Da. Eh? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Does anyone have any problem with this matrix? Nobody have a problem with this matrix. Last one doesn't have Z. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, this F by Z. Okay, Z dash equal to F by Z into Z. That will give me F. But uh, is this matrix? Is there some problem with this matrix? Matrix with dependent terms. Right. It's not. You can't do. See, Z is not a constant. That's right. Uh, uh, that's Z could take different values. Right. Z is somewhere here. You can't really write it there. So that's not a linear transformation. That or uh, a linear matrix that you could write it in this way. Uh, so. Can you tell me some way to deal with this, sir? Uh, we can take ratios of x and z, x by z, y by z, one. X by z, y by z. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, the actual x y z matrix could be re replaced by x by z, y by z, and one. X by z, uh, y by z, and one. No. I given a point, uh, so we encounter this problem in image transforms. Do you remember that? So, for example, you had a rigid transform. Okay, that case, what had happened? For example, x dash has moved to x plus t naught, and y dash has moved to y plus t naught, or yeah, y plus t naught. So that time we wanted to write. This rigid transformation, simple translation, right? So how did we write this? Normally, you could write it as one zero zero one times x y. Okay, uh, then you could write it as x dash equal to x plus t naught. Okay, uh, or you you could call it t x t y in the x direction translation. So I could write it as this one. Then. We, do you remember we con converted it back to uh, a, a nice in a nice way to a linear transform because x dash equal to a x is the linear transform which you can't write it right now. Do you remember that? X dash y dash and one. Right. You can you try something similar here? So. How could we write that out? For example, x dash, y dash. Okay, these are the two values I want. And uh, so, why is this is coming? Okay. So, for example, uh, assume that you create. That's exactly what you would be doing here also. So let me right away show you here. You use the same notation here. So instead of writing it as x, y, okay, you write them as or x dash, y dash. You write them as x dash, y dash, and let's say w, okay, or x double dash if you want me to write it, okay. So this is the transformation that you will be doing where now your x dash would be equivalent to x double dash by w y dash is equivalent to y double dash by w so this transformation you do at the end not in the beginning so till the last step you so this is the if you recollect that's what we refer to as homogeneous coordinate systems okay if you also remember there we were also this projection of a ray and across that changing the z value is essentially equivalent to having a w here uh, that's what we discussed there 
we started with this there x dash y dash one and then if you recollect we moved from there to x dash y dash w and anyway you take the ratio of it so that ratio would remain same and changing this w is changing its taking its projection at, at different z values uh, we were discussing the same point there hope some of you remember that mm. so we do the same trick here and thereby make it into we call it as homogeneous 2d coordinates okay uh, and then x by for at the last step what you do is x by w and y by w is as a last step you do it there so uh, this is what it is so look at here mm, uh, so x so you multiply the both what you get here here there is x there is this second in this would give you y this multiplication would give you z by f so this three by three matrix of one zero zero and then second element one and third element one by f okay uh, and then this if you multiply now this three by four sorry three by four instead of x y z now you have x y z one okay uh, that would give you a three cross one matrix look at its value okay uh, so that would give you so this multiplied with this would give you x y z by f so this is how you deal with it till the end and the last step would be to take a uh, like divide the first two elements with this so that would give you your x dash as x times z by f and your y dash as uh, y times yeah sorry f by x dash equal to x times f by z and y dash equal to y times f by z you call yeah you are calling it either uv or x dash y dash okay this so essentially the projection the whole projection this is a single projection matrix with which you are able to um, characterize or you are able to represent this the same trick that we used um, for uh, representing affine transforms uh, where you allow even translations along x and y not just the rot uh, see, rotations and scaling were easy to do uh, but the moment translations have come uh, to uh, the crisp way or easy way where you could uh, in fact uh, take a concatenation of things as well okay multiple uh, operations as well there nicely with this so the same thing till the last step this is having a linear property so that's how you so the moment you made x y z into x y z one and your so this is what you did to x y z has been modified to x y z one your x dash y dash you are modifying it to x dash y dash w dash okay and uh, this x dash y dash w dash in terms of x y z one is you are trying to represent instead of doing this representation x y in terms of x y z instead of that this is what you are trying now so the moment you are doing this out so x dash uh, yeah you you could you, it's up to you okay x dash y dash uh, so uh, this then you are able to express this as a linear uh, matrix is this clear so uh why are we extending the dimensions of the matrix to three cross four when we can do the, this with the three cross three and three cross three cross one matrix as well, right? Three cross three, huh? Yes, sir. One zero 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 one zero and zero zero one by f. Still here, huh? Yeah, and this with x y z only. Yes. See, this again is boiling to same question that was uh, earlier raised for uh, transform part. So you could so, but, that, that represent. So what you are saying is why not represent it as one zero 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 one zero 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 one by f, right? Multiplied with this is a three cross three, correct? Three cross three, yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. This you what do you want to put here? X, y, X, y Z. Okay, this is three cross one. So you get here. What do you get here now? 
yeah there is nothing wrong with that also that uh, probably uh, i do not know exactly but maybe uh, later some multiplication so we had a, not exactly the same but a similar thing while we are changing for a translation also uh, we had a similar argument there uh, for example where was that yeah so this also we had if you, do you remember there uh, whether we need to keep one more here and other things we were discussing but this also sounds fine not a problem so, so actually in there uh, while we were discussing transforms mm. there it was necessary because uh, one additional term which was not dependent on xyz was being added okay so there it was necessary to have this one but i don't think here it is that should give us x dash y dash right and uh, yeah th this is eventually the uh, okay this would be actually equivalent to x right the uh, if i write it here this is equivalent to x correct this multiplication second row with the second column is giving me y third row with the third column is giving me z by f okay uh, and then you are anyway doing this so that would give you x times f by z and y times f by z yeah i don't see any problem at least uh, unless you are trying to concatenate with something and that has an impact which i i don't know but as of now i don't see any problem even if you ignore these parts and ignore this stuff okay but all that is there is still here you will have one more here so x dash y dash anyway you will write it as x dash y dash w dash this part you cannot avoid so this is where you are increasing the dimensionality mm, is that fine yes sir yeah good uh, so i as of now i don't see any problem of writing it as 3 by 3 multiplied by 3 by 1 so i will check it out in case if there is any problem with it i let you know you also have take a, you guys also take a look at it but as of now immediately i can i don't see any problem in writing it that way sir yeah sir uh, i believe maybe it might be to uh, account for motions or translation in the 3d domain and how it would uh, be projected onto the 2d domain right. this uh, fourth uh, column can be used to right you know x t not y t not and z t not right that's quite possible so as such if you are looking at uh, without any translation if you are looking at it these things are not required correct but similar to the way you had a uh, x dash equal to yeah uh, so for a simple perspective projection it's not required but the moment there are translations or rotation i'm not sure but definitely for translations um, uh, you require those things that's right Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, so again, the same thing here. How does scaling? Uh, what What was the next thing you are discussing? It. Yeah. See again, we could have written. See all that they are doing is uh, this property. Also, we discussed in um, uh, in image transforms. Anything multiplied here. See the moment I have some x dash y dash. w okay if i am multiplying with some uh, value p here p here or a p here okay this would be exactly equivalent to have the same impact as x dash y dash w because what you get finally if you call them as u and v u is nothing but x dash p by w p which is same as x dash by w so the same trick is used here so with that i could in fact uh, get here instead of getting x y z by f giving this let me do a back calculation here in order to get this i could have actually had fx fy and z simply okay to get that what does that mean to get fx instead of one here so that's equivalent to multiplying this whole matrix with f oops okay uh, this whole matrix with f if i multiply it that would give me f00 Zero F zero 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 one zero. So this is also the perspective projection matrix. Is it fine? Because at the end, our U V is nothing but this is what you want to get it at the end of the day. 
so it's uh, since that scaling equals scaling of all these elements would give you the same result uh, you could in fact multiply the in order to avoid these kinds of fractions here i could have multiplied the whole thing with f that's all it is done mm, sir yeah. instead of scaling afterwards uh where not where we not scaling like before uh itself like in the original x y z coordinate hmm. if uh, we can divide the uh the x coordinate with respect to z y also with respect to z and then like a bit of uh, the, the ratios with respect to z can be taken it into account and then transform to that coordinate uh no i am not sure i got you fully but here this is a kind of scaling here only we are doing right uh so the scaling we are doing it here itself this f so this is equivalent to doing is scaling here so this whole thing you are scaling by f here what is the other thing you are saying sir so when we are account since we'll be accounting uh, like later if we are accounting for some translations mm. so like uh, this additional term which we are doing then this f x by z won't ex uh, exactly be equal to the uh, projection term which we will be getting the only that we are uh, translations and all we are assume because at this point maybe this matrix could be used for compensating that also but at this point in the whole perspective projection these always remain zero for us okay there is nothing uh, that going to change here okay sir so in that case simply multiplying so instead of having x y g by f i could have f x f y z correct because that would give me the same thing as here so this if you go back this x y z even multiplied with f so that's also another way you could look at it simply you so uh, all we are saying is uh, this is the perspective projection matrix could also be represented by this okay sir yeah good good right that's all about the uh, perspective projection matrix hope these things are clear to you here okay and then uh, you already uh, so usually points could go to points lying so of so 10:30 11:30 12 okay so what i would do is then maybe i don't need a extra class okay i will cover these points in the next lecture itself okay Uh, so i'll just give you some uh, leads here and then we will uh, i'll leave it to, that we will discuss a little later okay see uh, now uh, think of uh, uh, some parallel lines are there is there any suppose uh, um, how to say uh, uh, you imagine uh, you have parallel lines okay which are parallel to the ground okay that are there at some height now is there any view point in which if you take it the line would become a point so there are parallel lines okay uh, assume that those lines are also parallel to your ground now is there any uh, view angle in which you could keep your camera first of all is there any view angle in which you could keep the camera such that the line would parallel lines would remain parallel lines this is easier to answer for perhaps assume that you are taking the uh, with your camera you are taking the uh, photo of your mobile phone okay mobile phone has um, at least if you consider the top you had two sets of parallel lines there uh, forget for a moment about the height okay two sets of parallel lines are there is there any angle in which you take uh, the picture the parallel lines would become parallel remain as parallel lines if we take yes, a top view perpendicular right you take a top view if it is on the ground you take the top view so this is true with uh, even the railway tracks right if you take the railway tracks photo from the top view okay uh, that means uh, in that case parallel lines would remain as parallel lines now is there any view point in which if you take the photo a line could become a point along the line right it's like uh, all the engineering uh, that's that's all the engineering drawing course top you friend you and all which you study there suppose if that line perpendicular so you were uh, 
center of projection is also okay in line with the center of projection is exactly matching with the line that you are going to capture that is when a uh, a line could result as a point okay similarly can there be a plane could result as a line is this possible so with the same thing if you look at it if you are taking the camera uh, with the camera if you are taking picture of your cell phone you could uh, so the uh, when it is perpend so you keep it uh, perpendicular your camera perpendicular to the the plane which is perpendicular to that you won't be able to perceive any depth of it right so that turns out to be a line okay so these are quite possible when you are uh, so the reduction of dimensionality if you could uh, they are calling it as degenerate cases would also happen in perspective projections but anyway uh, un, uh, like uh, barring these exceptional cases points would map to points lines could map to lines but of course they could get skewed up polygons would still map to polygons and planes to planes or uh, with some uh, effects so that's what would happen another uh, so i will not go this math part we will see it in the next class but let me just uh, uh, point you out these things see here suppose you have not just two parallel lines okay two parallel tracks are also there okay in your image there is a very interesting thing that would happen here the you have taken this image where these lines appear in the perspective projection as if they are all uh, um, uh, they are all meeting at one point the interesting thing that would happen is all these parallel lines would meet at a single point and that point is called as vanishing point okay so think about it why this would happen why all the lines that are parallel if you are taking it why they should all meet at one point itself rather than having meeting two lines two parallel lines at one point and other line at a different point think about that point so the uh, if you are given the fact that these are all these are sets of parallel lines and in perspective projection all these points should meet at the uh, all these lines sorry all these lines should meet at the same point and that point would be referred to as vanishing point okay this math part will come back after some time okay people actually make use of this uh, so uh, for example you, whether uh, you had uh, photoshopped the image or whether you did uh, uh, you got it correctly or not okay what they would do is in the image you know which are parallel lines okay for example this might be a parallel line here okay this another parallel line could be there and you you extend those parallel lines in the image and see where they are meeting and if you had done uh, some photoshopping and inserted certain things there it's it's unless you know all these things and you account it for this as well which is not so easy uh, people might be able to do it but then for uh, the which in the real world parallel lines you would see them uh, meeting at different points that this is what would uh, happen so this is another example which in the drawing again you would be getting uh, you would see here all these sets of parallel lines so many lines assume that okay you have cubes uh, with the parallel lines they are essentially would uh, and then and there is another thing all these sets of parallel lines uh, which, uh, they form the locus also would form a single line okay that we will anyway come to that a little later but uh, the point uh, for you to make a note here is the parallel lines the vanishing there is a single if you call that point where all these parallel lines are parallel lines are meeting as a vanishing point for a the whole set of lines that are parallel they all meet at a single point okay you think about it why is it so anyway this part is what we would uh, discuss mathematically as well okay uh, in the next class okay and uh, yeah with these uh, few slides for the next class we will be uh, done with this okay then there is something else okay uh, hopefully we here we would see uh, somebody okay we'll come back to that anyway um, and then there is something you you give some relaxations to this perspective projection or you consider the special cases of this perspective projection then there is something called as a weak perspective projection and orthographic projection so these are the two things that we will discuss and with that uh, we will uh, wrap up 
the uh, we would wrap up the uh, perspective projection and uh, move to shape from stereo okay so yeah that's all uh, for today's zoom session so we could uh, I'll, you have any questions so far barring that vanishing point because that anyway i want you to think about it and then um, uh, let's discuss it in the next uh, thursday itself yeah, that we will discuss anyway these points i will upload these slides and along with this probably this zoom session as well so uh, yeah any questions so far so let me then just stop the recording part hopefully it's getting recorded yes okay let me stop the